Hey, greetings all. Last Outrider here, bringing you the next part of What is the Eye of Terror? The Creeping Death. If you're a Death Guard fan, you should stick around for this one. As the end of the 41st millennium drew closer, the first signs that Abaddon's long-feared attack was imminent came in the form of numerous sightings of drifting vessels emerging from the warp in the surrounding sectors. All were converging on the core, core worlds of each subsector, and, while this number of space hulks was rare, it was not unheard of. System defense ships scrambled to intercept them and prevent them from reaching their system's inhabited worlds. The vessels of the Adeptus Astarte boarded those they could, but their numbers were limited. The Space Marines found them to be twisted and disease-ridden nightmares, encrusted with all manner of necrotic matter and toxic filth. Subsequently, each and such vessel encountered was destroyed with torpedoes and bombardment cannons. But for some, it was already too late. With a synchronicity that could not have been coincidence, outbreaks of virulent sickness erupted among Imperial Navy crews within a day of a reported sighting of the dreaded chaos vessel Plague Claw in the outer reaches of the Ulthwart system by Captain Rourke of the Dauntless class cruiser. Duke Lurktemsvan. As the sickness spread throughout the region's naval forces, and the number of ships fit for duty fell exponentially, even more hulks dropped from the warp, converging on vital strategic worlds. Ships from neighboring subsectors rushed to destroy the hulks, and a small ad hoc fleet was assembled at Bellis Corona, under the command of Admiral Quarren. The fleet surged from port and began the hunt for the Plague Claw, though they were to encounter something far, far worse. In the shadow of the Frenorax dust cloud, the fleet was ambushed by a force of Chaos warships, led by the Terminus Est, flagship of the Herald of Nurgle, Typhus himself. The battle was short and bloody, with several Imperial ships crippled in the opening salvo of torpedoes, while others were overrun by vile, diseased creatures that vomited forth from the loathsome boarding craft. Admiral Quarren recovered well, and rallied his forces superbly, counterattacking and fighting his way clear of the trap. Typhus did not pursue, and the majority of Quarren's fleet was able to limp back to port. The battle of Ferrax had been a costly disaster, but there was worse to come. During the return journey to Bellis Corona, Thousands of crewmen sickened and died, and only with the help of system pilots was the fleet able to dock safely. But if the situation at Bellis Corona was bad, it was worse elsewhere. Many of the plague hulks had slipped through the defensive net, and the same contagion that had struck down the ship's crews was spreading like wildfire through many inhabited worlds in the Cadian and Agrippina sectors, as well as those of the Bellus Corona subsector. The hive world of Sabaccio Diablo proved to be an ideal breeding ground for the unknown plague, and was quickly quarantined by the officers of the Officio Medicae but not before millions had already perished. Within a month, a dozen of the other worlds reported cases of the plague, and panic spread 
as transit between the neighboring sectors was halted in an effort to stem further infection. As the epidemic spread, apocalyptic sects began appearing on every world afflicted, preaching that the emperor's wrath had descended upon them and was a punishment for their sins of wickedness and vice. Only the faithful would be spared the curse of unbelief, and the hordes of flagellating devotees filled the streets of every world around the Eye of Terror. The continued health of these fanatics gave their words the sheen of truth and millions flocked to hear their fiery rhetoric. The plague continued to spread. But it was on Sabacchio Diablo that the true horror of the plague was finally revealed. To the shock and disgust of the planet's inhabitants, the mass graves deep in the ash plains heaved and split. The corpses of those who had perished in the plague climbed from the lime-encrusted ground. Soon, millions of shambling corpses were advancing on the hive, clawing their way inside and attacking the weakened inhabitants. Within months, plague zombies were climbing from their graves on scores of worlds throughout the Bellus Corona and Agrippina sectors. The Imperial forces were stretched to the limit in containing these abominations, as well as mobs of flagellating zealots who burned Medicaid ward facilities to the ground in their misguided attempts to halt the plague. Paralyzed by the sheer scale of the academic, the naval forces in these regions were completely unprepared for the vast chaos fleet that emerged at the edge of Sabacchio Diablo's system and surged into the imperial space. The Herald of Nurgle, the Traveler, Typhus of the Death Guard, had come to reap the harvest of his plague. And nothing stood ready to stop him. Crazy, huh? And now for the narrative. Like many sector-wide conflicts, the Gothic War began slowly with sporadic and seemingly insignificant raids against smaller off outposts. Vessels, stricken with the disease, were discovered adrift in the Athena sector, along with other sightings of the chaos vessel Plague Claw. And astropaths began reporting unsettling disturbances in the warp. Panic and near and anarchy became widespread as fanatical sects arose, believing that the emperor, bless his holy name, was displeased with them. Hysteria spread throughout the sector, and many of the world's order broke down completely. The imperial navy lost several ships to accidents in space dock, that were subsequently blamed on poor maintenance and faculty faulty ammunition. A rather too convenient explanation for my tastes. Three years after the first raid at Arx, the forces of the despoiler struck. Abaddon's fleet struck at a dozen imperial bases and sent the warships of battleship Gothic reeling. Chaos ships attacked all across the Gothic sector, and the first inkling of Abaddon's true intentions was to come to light in the Rebo system, where one of the mysterious black stone fortresses orbited the fifth planet. 
these massive edifices of unknown origin had been refitted to serve as bases for the ships of Battlefleet Gothic. For the first time in history, one of these fell to Abaddon's forces, and has he was soon to make a horrifying use of the captured base. Abaddon's fleet had a devastating weapon, never before seen, named the Planet Killer. Its name was not simply born from the arrogance of its builders, but horrifyingly well-deserved, as Abaddon demonstrated at the cardinal world of Scraven. The account of the destruction of Scraven from Jeremiah Sold Soldrigan, Scraven's orbital defense commander, still had the power to chill the soul. His description of continents splitting apart, burning skies, and the planet breaking into pieces made solemn reading indeed. Fourteen million people died within an hour of the crippling effects of this imperial, of this effect on imperial morale should not be overestimated. Many worlds were hurriedly, though unfortunately not entirely, evacuated before the planet killer arrived. Another black stone fell at Brignata, at Phalaris II. Abaddon was to terrifyingly demonstrate the true power of these ancient constructs. Exact information regarding the incident is sketchy, but evidence points to a massive energy beam being unleashed from the Blackstone Fortress that scoured Phalaris II, bare, stripping its atmosphere and transforming its surface into a barren, rocky plain. Imperial forces were continually engaged throughout the sector, from Hammerhead Deeps to the Cyclops Cluster, desperate to halt the might of the Chaos Fleet. At the outset of year 151 of the 41st millennium, Lord Admiral Ravensburg took the fight to the enemy, resulting in the clash at Gesethemy, where he was able to utterly destroy a chaos fleet of considerable size. Eldar vessels also fought in this battle, though many historians believe their role to have been minimal, whereas my researches, particularly into the actions of Captain Leoten Simper and his ship the Lord Solar Macarius, point to a considerable Eldar involvement in the latter stages of the war. QV Warp Gates News of this great victory invigorated the Imperial Navy, and, as the warp storms that had isolated the Gothic sector for so long began to abate, vessels from neighboring sectors were finally able to reinforce the Lord Admiral's bloodiest fleet. Abaddon brought the full power of the Blackstones to bear on the star of Tarantis, the mustering point for ships entering the Gothic sector, in an attempt to stem Ravenberg's reinforcements. Combining their power, the Blackstones caused the Tyrannus Star to explode, killing everything within the system. The final battle of the war was to be fought at Shinglegeist, where Blackstone V floated in the depths of space. 
a trap was sprung by the Lord Admiral and the Eldar, who defeated Abaddon's greatest fleet in a truly magnificent three-day battle. In an act of spite, Abaddon sought to destroy the star there also. And had it not been for the sacrifice of Captain Aberdell on the Flame of Purity, the victory would have been a hollow one. Abaddon had been defeated, though he escaped with two of his captured Blackstones. Through various sources, claim that they must have been destroyed. Unfortunately, this appears to be merely wishful thinking. While the ultimate fate of these immeasurably powerful artifacts is yet unknown, I fear the Imperium will eventually rue their loss. Hmm. Next we go on to the Black Crusades of Abaddon the Despoiler. Now you're learning about the Gothic War, just in time for the release of the game Battlefleet Gothic. So when you buy it, you'll actually know what Battlefleet Gothic actually is. It's a good idea. Until then. <laughs>